It's the month of Valentine's, and do we have a special one for you. I happened upon her lovely smile, uh, appropriately cover girl on this edition of a magazine called Beautiful One from 2007. Best-selling author Stormy O'Martian has been a beautiful gift to the family of God for decades. <laughs> when you. I encounter a woman in a marriage crisis, Stormy, I think I said this last time you were here, I always say first, have you read The Power of a Praying Wife? Thank you. That is my Thank starting you. place. Thank you. And I think that was your starting place. Yes, well, yes. Um, the first, I wrote a book on health uh, years ago. That was my very first book. And then the second book was The Power of a Praying Parent. And then the third book was The Power of Praying for Your Husband or Power of Praying for Your Wife. You know, The Power of a Praying Husband, The Power of a Praying Wife. And um, a lot of people think that was the first one, but it was actually the second. And, and those two came uh, close together. And it was a phenomenal thing uh, because it was something that God had taught me about praying for my husband. I didn't know. I should have known, but I didn't know for sure it was going to work for everybody. But it does. If you do, if you do the work that's in the, in that book, it works for your marriage. It is a paradigm shift for most of us <laughs> yes. who read it, and that really became a phenomenon. It became, a, I don't know, a series of. Yes. How many? Oh, I, well, eight or nine. Eight or nine. <laughs> I haven't really actually counted that, how many of the in the praying series. It just series. kept going. Yeah, it just kept going. It you did. are but, well, a woman about prayer. Well, it seemed that I am. I, I, I love to communicate with God through prayer. It's, I've seen such powerful things happen, miracles, miraculous things. And, and I am such a believer in communicating with God and telling him our needs and, and uh, finding out his will and finding guidance from him. And, and expecting that. that all the resources of heaven yes. are at your disposal. Yes, and it's amazing what he will do through our prayers when we join with him in partnership in our lives. It's now, amazing. I know you haven't counted everyone, but I think it's it's over 65 books to date. Yes, uh, I haven't it, counted them. I lost, I stopped counting at 50. <laughs> I was too tired by that time. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for this. This shouldn't mm -hmm. be a surprise because this is the other message of your life choosing love. You yes. chose love on many levels. You've already illustrated that in a tremendous marriage crisis, that had to be the choice to save yes. uh, your, your family. Your son is here today. Yes, he is. He's traveling with me today. I'm so grateful. And congratulations on your first grand baby, yes. a granddaughter. Yes, I'm so excited. It's, it's his baby. He and uh, his wife, Paige, uh, have produced this perfect little creature <laughs> that has just stolen my heart, absolutely, and theirs as well, of course, and my husband's. And so um, it's, it's a great gift. It's everything everyone said it would be. So thrilled, so thrilled for all of this. And because we have you for five marvelous segments, we're going to be unpacking slices of your life as we go. Right. Someone said once, we are all the product of those who have loved us or chosen not to love us. Yes, that is so true. And Stormy, yes. you are really a poster girl for both of those. Yes. Uh, you you were not loved as a child. Not that I perceived, you know what I mean? That's, uh, I know my dad loved me. He, he wasn't very demonstrative uh, with that. My mother was mentally ill. Um, and Locked you in a closet. Yes, yeah, she locked me in a closet much of my early childhood. That's the way she coped. I never actually quite knew why I was there. It wasn't like I did something and then I was punished for it. I was just put there because that's the way she could cope with having a child. And it, you know, it's really interesting, Moira, that um, years later, um, I realized that through the help of other people, you know, who, who really gave me a message from the Lord and had impressed upon their heart. And they told me that God had really protected me in that closet all those years. And because- From what might have happened what might if have you ha weren't in the closet. Exactly, exactly. Really? And yes, that was a really, uh, talk about the love of God. Sometimes we think God's punishing us for certain things um, when actually he's protecting us from things. He doesn't let us have everything we want for a reason. And he, he, it's because he loves us. And that's the main uh, theme of this book was that when you realize how much God loves you, um, and that's the first step in this whole, uh, book is to understand and open up to the love of, of God. Because a lot of people 
I, for example, when I first became uh, a believer, knew that God loved everybody else, but I wasn't sure that he loved me. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people have that. A lot of people think God's mad at them or that he doesn't love them or how could he love them or, you know, all of these things. And that is um, partly what's wrong with us. <laughs> you know, why we hurt and why we struggle and why we... Um, feel like failures is because we don't understand the deep and wonderful uh, unconditional love of God for us. We're going to be focusing on uh, three things. Your byline is the three simple choices that will alter the course of your life. Yes. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag right here. <laughs> uh, three, three things. Receive God's love. We're going to start there today and mm -hmm. probably spend a lot of time on this. Uh, right. Choose to show or demonstrate God's love. And here's the cool thing. Stormy says, when you do that, God gives you more. Yeah. More well, to give away. You're demonstrating your love for God back to him because he loves you so much. That's right. that, that second step. Yeah. And, and then love others in a way that pleases God. Mm. Now, just to come back to the distortions, the things that mess up any idea about love. Yes. In your experience for so many years, those nurturing formative years, yes. love was a lie. Love was, I, I don't even know what you thought love could ever be. That kind of damage, it does soul damage, damage yes. mm -hmm. in many people's lives becomes a barrier to God's love. Yes, it does. It does. You, you, you feel unloved. And so you feel, that's why I feel like an unlovable person, that there's something wrong with me that, you know, I wasn't until you're old enough to really understand it, until I was able to understand that my mother was mentally ill and my dad was just not demonstrative. You know, he always felt that if you show too much love to your child, then you're going to spoil them and they're going to be arrogant or, you know, obnoxious or whatever. Not understanding that that's, uh, it, it, that's you can spoil a child in, in a certain way, but not by loving them. You he know. must not have known what was going on through the day in that home. No, oh, no, he didn't. Not until later. Mm. He didn't. Because he, this is what happened when he was gone. You know, she would lock me in a closet when, when he was gone. And when she, he came home, I was out of the closet, you know. So he didn't know uh, until later what was going on. You say in the book, we see ourselves through a prism of our flaws. Yes. And that was one of the barriers for you. You, you yes. just had so much self-condemnation. Yes. Something must be wrong with me. Absolutely. And that's why I talk, talk about a magnifying mirror in there. You know how when we get our first magnifying mirror and you look in there and you're like <laughs> shocked to death, you know, um, it scares you because you see everything magnified, you know, every pore, every blemish, every brown spot, everything is magnified. And we often look at ourselves through that same kind of critical magnifying you know, lens and um, see all the flaws and see all the failures. And, and, and God sees us, he sees those things too. He sees anything that's wrong, but he doesn't see it from a standpoint of judgment, like you're bad. He sees it as a way for you to come to him and he will strengthen you and he will help you. He will take your weakness and he will be strong in the midst of that. And, and he, it's amazing, all, the, all because he loves us, he sees our flaws and our failures as a way for him to be strong in us and, and to do great things through us. It's, it's amazing when you come to know God in that way and really receive his love in that way. We'll probably have more time next segment for the whole story, but it is so surprising that this was a real struggle for you while you oh, were yes. appearing on the Dean Martin show and the Mac Davis mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. and backup singing for people like Glenn Campbell and so many other celebrities. You were in Hollywood. Yes, I, and I was really working a lot too. And I was really grateful for that, but I was so fearful that people was, were going to find out what a failure I was. And, and I had such anxiety attacks and, and depression, and I was just fighting that all the time all the time that pain and that you know trying to put up a good front and and you know make people love me and you know all of this and and people didn't suspect except that those closest to me knew you know but uh, most people didn't suspect and I was just trying to keep up that um, that good front you know it's, it's exhausting exhausting and, yeah. and, and sad to, to see that you were struggling to find a reason despite all the success yeah a reason to, to live. live yeah to a reason to live how did God find an opening 
in this very damaged, very confused and broken life? Well, I was, uh, was exactly the way I was, and um, damaged, confused, depressed, an anxious, uh, fearful, just uh, all, all of those things, extremely lonely. And um, it wasn't, I tried everything to get out of that. I mean, I tried drugs and alcohol and Eastern religions and occult practices and, and just unhealthy relationships, it's just all kinds of things, trying to just find a way out of the pain, that's all. I just wanted to be free of the pain. And, I, and everything I tried just made it worse. You know, I could get a temporary relief, but it was worse afterwards. I, got, I sank deeper into that abyss that I was falling into. And it wasn't until someone, um, a singer on, on uh, television with me, her name was Terry, and she uh, took me to meet her pastor, and uh, he talked about Jesus and, like a personal friend. You know, I never heard of such a thing. And he said that God had a plan for my life, which I never knew. And he said that God, if I received him, if I received his son, Jesus, he would, he, he would give me his spirit to dwell within me. That's, that's the way he would be with me always. And he would enable me to transcend what I had become and become all that God made me to be. And that God had a purpose for my life, which I never knew about that in a plan. And so I, I, that appealed to me. I just, I thought, that is, this is great. I mean, if this is even remotely true, this is great. And so I received the Lord and, um, and the pastor gave me several books to read, one of which was the Gospel of John, which really explains everything. And I read that and I came back to his office with my friend Terry the following week and um, received the Lord. And something began to change. When I received the Lord, I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I didn't know exactly what I was getting into, but something was different. I began to sense that seed of hope for my future, which I had none at that point. In fact, I was, I was planning my suicide. I was, I was just gonna collect enough sleeping pills. And one day I was not gonna wake up because I couldn't take the pain anymore. And um, I began to feel hope. There was hope for my life. I began to see a light at the end of the long, dark tunnel of my life. And I, I, I started going to church and reading the Bible and listening to the great teaching uh, of the pastor. And uh, I, I began to feel just things changing inside me and it began to be a transformative you know, experience. And, and, and I, that's what, that was the beginning of everything all those 60 books <laughs> and so much more yes and, so and we're going more. to delve more into this um, every chapter in the book ends with uh, words of love scriptures yes a big part of your healing yes. process and a, a prayer of love yes stormy would you feel comfortable for someone maybe as desperate as you were mm. with those pills ready to go yes ready to end your life Yes. To just lead in a simple prayer that someone right now could open their heart. This is the yes. word. This is the word of the month. Yes. Love. Oh, Valentine's. Right Day. here. Yes. yes. Uh, just open your heart to that. Yes. Love that transformational love. Would yes. You? Oh, I'd love to. Lord, I'm, for anyone who's, who's listening out there who agrees with me in the experience that I've had as far as feeling devastated and unloved or unlovable or as a failure, we see ourselves. Lord, through this magnifying glass of, of criticism, Lord, self-criticism and self-condemnation. God, we confess that before you as sin. We know that that's not what you want for our lives. Lord, you have made us to be a, a, an instrument in your plan and purpose, God. And we pray right now for each of us, and within the sound of my voice, all of us here right now, joining together, that you would impress upon our hearts, Lord, your deep and wonderful and unconditional, unfailing love for us, Lord. Help us to understand it, Lord. Help us to see you, God, with the magnification we need to see. Make yourself really well known to each one of us so that we can understand your plan and purpose for us, God. We know that you have so much more than we are aware so much more that you have designed for us and, and planned for us, God. Help us to understand, uh, help us to open up our hearts, God, and receive your love for us like never before. When we read your word, help us to see your love. You, you're, it's a book of love letters to us, Lord. Help us to understand that, Lord. Every time we read your word that we, we understand more and more your 
great love for us. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> If you've prayed that prayer for the first time to invite Jesus to come and take over your heart and life, would you call our prayer line? Let us know. We would love to encourage you, help you to get a strong start like Stormy had. Mm, exciting to see what your new year holds.